displays. Two most important questions. And if it is displaced, what is the two questions you need to ask? And not displaced, also you must ask these two questions. All these are the housemen I'm going to release onto the world. It's like, don't ask me any questions. I don't have enough contact time with everyone, okay, to train them. Forceful, not forceful. Okay, forceful, not forceful. So if an apex speed is not displaced, not forceful, what kind of apex speed is it? Normal apex speed. Mm -hmm. Having an apex speed is very hard, right? It's hard to find, not like that guy just down there. So if it's hard to find, you know your apex speed is normal. Like. If your apex speed is easy to find, it is <laughs> normal. Okay, so if it's not displaced, then but forceful. That means you put your hands there, you can feel it. Really. What does it mean? And the next question you have to ask is whether it's sustained or non sustained. Sustained, it stays up longer than it stays down. And then uh, not sustained, it just stays up. Just comes up, reach you, and go back into the room already. Okay, so if it's sustained, what is it? This is your heaving apex speed. Okay, if it's not sustained, it's tapping. It's heaving is seen in. Heaving is seen in. Arctic stenosis. Tapping is seen in micro stenosis. Mm -hmm. Notice that all the stenosis are not displaced. But the only problem is when you see in real life, most of the patients that come to you in the hospital are already advanced. Advanced uh, AS and all that sort of thing. So they are myocardium has started dilating, so they will be displaced and they won't be heaving anymore because usually they will have an AR, they usually have an AR mixed with the AS. Just like just on the patient. He has an ER with an ES. That's, that is why when you have an ER combined with an ES, the pulse feels very weak because it's, the volume is reduced. At the same time, it also has correct. So your correction pulse you expect is very big, but it looks feels normal because your low volume normal is negated by the, uh, the large volume of the collapsing pulse. All right, if it is displaced and not forceful, then we are dealing with this. Yeah, for, uh, have you ever tried to feel the apex of a CCF patient or not? Hard to find, right? You know it's displaced or it's hard to find. If it is displaced and forceful, displaced and forceful, this is your trusting apex speed, which is a sign of volume overload, which you will see in MR and AR. So we'll see regurgitation, regurgitation, displaced. Sometimes if you have a aortic regurgitation coexisting with an aortic stenosis, which one is dominant? You see the displaced. If the if the apex is displaced, then the ER is dominant. If the apex is not displaced, that means the AS is dominant. Dominance is determined by the apex. But by the time the patient comes to you in the clinic, already in heart failure, most of the time it's already become displaced already. So the dominance is towards the regurgitated one. What if the apex is all over? Okay, so you have your so the apex is switch up here, switch up here, switch up here. Okay, so the apex is all over. Very hard to localize the apex. What does this mean? This is known as the dyskinetic apex. This kinetic apex tells you that this patient has a focal hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Okay, sometimes they have jerky pulse. What is a jerky pulse? That means big pulse, small pulse, small pulse, small pulse, big, big, small. So it's because the obstruction of the hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy is different from B to B. If there's more blood in the ventricle, then there's less obstruction. So there's more flow out. If let's say the patient is in uh, inspiration, there's less blood in the left ventricle, then the obstruction is small, so the pulse will be smaller. So it's different beat to beat, it's not regular. So that's called a jerky pulse. Again, that's also a sign of hokum. But nowadays it's very rare to see hokum because the moment you detect hokum, it's negligent if you don't do something about it every day because the patient can have sudden cardiac, uh, cardiac death. So, but on and off, you still find a person with more hokum than the past. But now, most of the day, the moment you detect hokum, you're gonna play, you're gonna do a uh, 
uh, put in a pacemaker or something, or a defibrillator or something like that to prevent uh, sudden cardiac death. So this is all the questions you need to ask when you're dealing with a apex. Okay, there, finish with, finish with apex.